This is your complete beginner's guide to the Rode Wireless Go 2. These are super tiny, small wireless audio transmission system and they're really easy to use. However, there is a lot of little features built into these that make them even better than some of the other microphones out on the market. So let's just go through a quick outline of what you're gonna find in this video. First, we're gonna go over the actual units themselves. Section two will go through how you use them and how you set them up properly. Section three is gonna go through Rode Central, which is a piece of software that Rode includes that's on your computer, and it unlocks a bunch of extra functionality out of these little wireless goes and then section four we're gonna go through the backup recording and my workflow when I use this feature so whenever I get asked a recommendation for wireless audio I always recommend the Rode wireless go 2 for a few reasons number one is that they're easy to use they're super simple you basically plug them in and once you have your settings set up the first time they're pretty much set to go for most situations now the other reason is that you get two wireless transmitters for one receiver, which means that you could have two people mic'd up at any time, and that audio is gonna be split in a way where you can control them independently in the edit. And I'll explain how all of that works later on, but you don't have to use it with this dual functionality, but it is good to have it just in case you do need to mic up two people at once. And it's gonna work with your mirrorless camera. So my Sony a7S Mark III works great with these. It's gonna work with your iPhone and you can even plug these directly into your computer. And the last reason is you get a backup recording on the transmitter. There's very few transmitters on the market that have this backup recording functionality and there's nothing this small. And the reason that the backup recording is so special is that if there's any sort of dropout, if there's any time where the audio cuts out, you don't lose that audio. On other wireless systems, if say there's a transmission issue between the transmitter and the receiver, you've lost that audio. However, with the Rode Wireless Go 2, you could set this to have a backup recording going the entire time of your shoot. And then if there is issues, you just use the backup recording and then you saved your audio. And this is super important, especially when you're a solo creator. If you're shooting, doing audio, in front of camera, all at the same time, you can't be monitoring audio while you're recording. So having this backup is just a safety net in case anything happens. So first, let's dig into what comes in the box. You're gonna get a receiver. This is what you're gonna plug into your camera, your phone, your computer and this is what is taking the audio from the transmitters. Now, you're gonna receive two transmitters in this box, and these are what you're gonna put on yourself or on the person that you're recording, and it's what's sending the signal to the receiver. Now, you're also gonna get three fuzzy windscreens, and on these transmitters, there's actually a microphone built in, so you don't have to use a lavalier mic. You could just use this, and this microphone is very sensitive, so if you have it hooked on your shirt, your jacket, or whatever, and there's some wind blowing on you, you're gonna hear that in the form of So the fuzzy windscreen is gonna go on top of this and cut out all of those wind sounds. Now you're gonna get three USB-C to USB-A cables. You're gonna get one 3.5 TRS cable, and then you're gonna get a small carrying pouch. Now what's so cool about this setup is everything fits in this pouch, and this pouch alone is smaller than most wireless systems on the market. So you could throw this in your bag, you could throw this in your pocket, and you always have a two transmitter setup for any situation. And for documentary shooters, for YouTubers, it just unlocks a lot of potential to not carry a lot of extra audio gear and have this functionality to have this dual audio setup for any situation that you're in. So next, let's go over the buttons that you're gonna find on the receiver. So starting on the front where it says Rode Wireless Go 2, you'll see a screen. And this is gonna tell you all the information that you need to know when you're out recording. We're gonna go over what all of this means in a little bit. On the top, you're gonna to have your power button. It has the Rode O on it. On the left side, you'll have a USB-C and you'll have your 3.5 millimeter TRS connection. On the bottom, you have on the left, your gain control and mute button and then your pair button and channel selection button. And in terms of buttons, that's it. It's a very simple system. And the last thing that you're gonna find is the clip on the back. Now what's really cool about this clip is that it doubles as a cold shoe mount. So you don't need to have any additional accessories to put this on top of your camera. Now let's go over the transmitter. There's even less buttons on this one. So on the front, you're only gonna see two lights in the upper left-hand corner. The left one is your connectivity indicator, 
and the right one is your battery. Now moving right, you'll see that the microphone is dead center. And then next to that is your TRS connection. It's a 3.5 millimeter. So if you're using a lavalier mic, you just plug it in there and it overtakes the microphone that's in the Rode Wireless Go transmitter. So you could use this either as a microphone built in, no cables, no nothing. You just pop this on and start recording. Or you could plug in a lavalier mic into the TRS connection right here. Now Rode makes an additional lavalier mic. This is smaller than the actual transmitter. So if you want a smaller profile, you just use the Rode Lav and you could put that on the edge of your shirt. And then on the other end, you'll find your 3.5 millimeter TRS connection and you plug that into the top of your Rode Wireless Go transmitter and it takes over the microphone that's built in to the actual transmitter. Now Rode also has a headset mic with a 3.5 millimeter input and it works the same way. You stick it into the TRS connection, it takes over the transmitter and the audio is coming exclusively from the lavalier mic that goes over your ear. Now on the side, you're gonna find your USB-C port for charging and connecting to your computer. And then on the bottom, you're gonna find your power indicator. That's the Rode O that you'll see on the bottom. Now the clip is the exact same on the transmitter as the receiver. So if you did wanna put this into a cold shoe mount, you easily can. You could also use it to clip on anywhere on your clothing. It just makes it super simple that it's all integrated and such a small little package. All right, so next let's talk about these windscreens. I've touched on them briefly. You get three of them in the package, which are these little fuzzy things, and my daughter loves playing with these. But I love that Rode included three because you have one for each transmitter and then a backup if you lose one, which sometimes will happen. So the Rode Wireless Go 2 transmitter is omnidirectional. And what that means is that it's picking up audio in a spherical pattern versus a very directional pattern. So if you're using a shotgun microphone, it's gonna pick up audio in front of that microphone and not behind it and not off to the sides. The idea of a directional microphone is you put it on top of your camera and you get what's in front of you, but not what's behind you. With an omnidirectional, you're basically capturing audio in kind of a 360, just think of it like a sphere. So when you put your Rode Wireless Go right here on your chest, it's gonna pick up kind of the audio all around here. And this microphone is sensitive, so if there is any wind that hits the actual microphone on the transmitter, you're gonna hear a so with the Rode Wireless Go 2, you get the windscreen, and these are really easy to put on. You'll see two little white dots on the bottom of it, and you'll wanna line that up with the two dots that you see on the transmitter themselves. And then you do a half turn clockwise, and it's locked on there. Now, the original Rode Wireless Go didn't have this half turn built into it, it was just a clip, and this fuzzy would always fall off. With the version two, you have this half turn, the fuzzy doesn't really come off and it makes it a lot easier to use because you don't have to worry about these popping off all the time. And then to take off your windscreen, you do a half turn counterclockwise, pop it off, and then you know put this somewhere so you don't lose it. You don't need to keep the wind fuzzy on at all times. You only really need to use it if there's any chance of something hitting the mic, some sort of wind or air. So if you're outside, it probably is a good idea to use it. But if you're in an indoor controlled setting and there's not like a fan or AC blowing on the microphone, then just use this as is. So let me just briefly touch on how these work. Rode Wireless Go 2s use a digital transmission that's 2.4 gigahertz, and you get up to 200 meters in range from the transmitter to the receiver. So most situations, you're gonna have a clean signal. It's not gonna have any issues. And even if you're in a crowded environment, you should still get a clean signal with the system. Different systems use RF signal, which when you're in a crowded environment and there's lots of RF bouncing around, it would cause a lot of issues. So for example, I work with a lot of audio guys on my shoots for my production company and we'll use different styles of systems that are on the RF signal. And if there's a lot of police activity, if there's a lot of chatter on radios, it ends up causing issues with the signal. Now, Rode Wireless Go 2 uses a digital signal so you're not gonna have that same type of interference. However, it doesn't mean that they're perfect because you still wanna maintain a line of sight. As soon as you get in a busy environment, you go behind walls, you get behind a car, you might lose the signal. So that is why the backup recording is so important on these. Ideally, you wanna keep a line of sight between your transmitter, say it's on your camera over there, 
and the receiver, and you wanna make sure that you have a clean line of sight. Now, where this becomes a problem is if you're using this, say, on your back, you put the transmitter on your back, your body might block some of the signal. And especially if you are doing, say, fitness, and you go to the ground to do something like a crunch or a floor exercise, and your body covers this, it's most likely gonna cut out completely. And so ideally, you wanna put this in a place where you're not gonna cover it completely with your body, or it's gonna go behind something. So if you're talking straight to camera, putting it on your hip, putting it in a front pocket, putting it slightly behind on the back of your pant line is gonna be much better than if it's directly behind you. Now, one last thing in this section, when you get the Wireless Go 2 out of the box, they're automatically gonna be paired. So channel one and channel two is gonna be paired to transmitter one and transmitter two. And as soon as your system is paired, it's always gonna be paired every time you turn it on. So if this is transmitter one and it's paired to channel one, every time I turn on this transmitter and the receiver, it's always gonna pop up as channel one. So what's one thing that's great about the Wireless Go system is you can use multiple of them at the same time. Say you have multiple cameras, you have a bigger shoot going on, and you're never gonna have issues with the pairing. Now, if your Wireless Go does come unpaired, I'm gonna show you in the next section how you actually go about repairing. But out of box, these are already paired. You don't have to do anything. You just turn them on and they're basically ready to go. But let's get into section two, which is gonna go over all of the buttons and how you actually use these devices to get good audio. Let's start at the very beginning. How do you turn these on? So on the bottom where this O is, you're just gonna press and hold until you see the device light up. There's no double tap, nothing like that. You just hold it until it turns on. And the same is for the transmitter as the receiver. And as soon as you turn both the transmitter and the receiver on, you'll see the lights indicated on the transmitter and on the receiver, your screen will light up. And if there's any sounds or if you're talking, you're gonna start seeing the bars dance around, which means that the transmitter is hearing audio. Now to turn these off, it's just repeating how you turn them on. You just press and hold the power button for a few seconds until you see the lights go completely dark. Now to disconnect your transmitter from your receiver, you're gonna click the button on the right hand side, which is your channel selection, and you'll see a box pop up around one. You click it again, it'll pop up around two. This is just basically selecting one microphone at a time. And then when the box is around that transmitter, you press and hold for three seconds, and it's gonna disconnect the transmitter from the receiver. Now for most of you, there's gonna be no reason for you to ever disconnect the transmitter from the receiver. But if your transmitter does get disconnected for any reason, you basically, you do the same thing, you select the microphone, you press and hold for three seconds, it's gonna put the receiver into pairing mode, and then with your transmitter turned on, you press once on the power button, and then it will automatically reconnect. Now let's talk about connections for your receiver to the device that you're recording on. So for cameras, you're gonna use the 3.5 TRS connection. This will plug directly into your camera's input. So a lot of times on cameras, that'll be marked with a red ring around that connection. Make sure that you're plugging into the audio input and not the headphone input. Even filmmakers who've been doing this for a super long time accidentally plug it in the wrong port sometimes. So just make sure you're plugging into the audio input and that you're checking that you're getting signal on your camera from the receiver. Now you could also connect this to your phone or your computer. Now what's really cool about the Rode Wireless Go 2 is that when you plug into your computer, you use the USB-C. And when you're using the USB-C to transmit audio to your computer, you can use the TRS connection to plug in headphones and actually monitor your audio using headphones. So if you're plugging directly into a camera, you're gonna have to plug into your camera's headphone port, which some cameras don't have a headphone port, they just have an audio input. So in those situations, you're not gonna be able to monitor your audio. However, when you're plugging into your computer, you can use this TRS connection as your headphone monitoring. And the same thing goes for your phone. You use the USB-C and you have to get a special cable that's not included that goes from USB-C to your phone's connection and then you'll be able to plug this into your phone and this turns into a digital audio transmitter versus an analog. So when you're plugging into your computer or your phone, you're gonna use that device to control how loud you want the audio to be recording. But then when you're plugging into your camera, you're gonna use a mix of your camera settings and the gain settings on the receiver 
to get the best sounding audio. So whether you're a creator that uses a camera or a phone, or you wanna just plug everything into your computer and use this for Zoom meetings, you could use the Rode Wireless Go for a lot of different applications. Let's talk about the battery life on the Rode Wireless Go 2. So these will last for around seven hours and you have a USB-C on the side and you charge these using a USB-C cable. Now you can continue to use your Rode Wireless Go while it's charging. So if you could plug in an external power source and you can continue to use them while it's charging. And the same thing for the transmitters. However, it's not gonna make that much sense to use a transmitter while it's charging because you have to have that on you somewhere. So the only time that seven hours is gonna be an issue is if you're trying to record all day. So you'll either have to have a backup set or what you could do is have a backup battery for the receiver, plug it in when it's getting low, and then just swap out the transmitter if you're just recording on one at a time. That is one downside with the system. There's no battery that you can swap out. However, they do charge fairly fast and you just need to make sure to keep them charged all the time. All right, next let's go over what you find on the screen for the receiver. So right now I have both transmitters turned on and I'm using split recording. And I'll explain what split recording versus merged recording is in a little bit. So at the top, you're gonna see your microphones in order one and two. And the lines that are bouncing around, that's your audio signal. So on the left side is low volume and on the right side is high volume. So you can see as I'm talking, it bounces up towards that right side and in the yellow is where you're hitting kind of the top range of the microphone. Now underneath that, you're gonna see basically three squares. Now one is transmitter one and the information for that transmitter. The middle is kind of some global settings and then on the right is two and that is for transmitter two. Now if you press the pair button or the channel selector, the one, two on the bottom, you'll see a box pop up around one, click it again, it'll pop up around two. So in each transmitter, you're gonna find the battery level, that's the battery indicator. You're gonna find your audio level, which is the bouncing line at the bottom. And then you're gonna have your receiver strength, which is right next to the battery. So that's how good the signal is between your transmitter and your receiver. Now in the middle, let's talk about the global settings. The little wedge shape at the top, that is your gain control. So that's how much volume is coming out of the receiver. And when you click the gain button on the left side on the bottom, you'll see that it changes. And right now I have it in the three selector mode. So there's three different gain outputs, which is zero, negative 12, and negative 24. But you just use the button on the bottom to change how much you're outputting. And out of the box, it will come with setting zero, negative 12, negative 24. Zero is when it's completely filled, negative 12 is when it's half filled, and negative 24 is when it's the least amount filled. And when you're doing audio, you just wanna think that zero is like the top of your audio. That is the loudest that you can ever be with your audio. You can never go above zero. So decibels work in negative, so they go down. So if you're recording at negative 24, that's gonna be a lot quieter than recording at negative 12 or negative zero. So just think of zero at the top and you're working your way down. Now underneath your gain indicator is gonna be the receiver battery. So you'll see three batteries on this at all times if you have all three turned on. And then next to that is a little sun icon. And this is for your backlit display. So on this screen, you can have this dim and it goes into power saver mode. So to activate that, right now it's not in power saver mode, but you just click once on the power button and then the edges of that sunburst will go away. It'll just be a dot in the center. And now you're in power saver mode. So after 10 seconds, you'll see the screen dim. So you're not using as much battery power to have this screen displayed. Now, if you just click the power button once again, the backlit display will always be turned on and it will be much brighter. Now on the transmitter, you have your two lights. You're gonna have your battery indicator and then you're gonna have your connection indicator. So when they're both blue, that means it's charged and you have a strong connection between the transmitter and the receiver. When your battery is low on your transmitter, your battery indicator will start flashing and if it's flashing faster, that means you're almost completely out of battery. Now on the receiver, the little battery icon will change from amber to red to show you that the battery levels are getting low. So green and a solid blue light means that you have plenty of power, but if you're flashing on the transmitters or you're seeing an amber or a red indicator on the receiver, that means you're running out of battery and you need to charge them soon. 
All right, so let's talk about how you would use this as a single transmitter or a dual transmitter setup. And what we're gonna talk about is merged versus split recording. And then I also wanna discuss the safety channel. So out of the box, this comes in the split recording mode, which basically means that one channel is recording transmitter one and the other channel is recording transmitter two. So how audio works is there is a left and a right channel. If you put on your headphones, there's a channel independently for both the left and the right. And when you're recording in camera, you're recording a stereo pair, that's a left and a right. Now, if you're using the original Rode Wireless Go, or say just a shotgun microphone, and you plug into the audio port on your camera, it's gonna be recording on both the left and the right channel. Now, with the Rode Wireless Go 2, you can split that. So you can have your left channel recording microphone one and your right channel recording microphone two. And the reason that you would wanna do this is so that in your editing software, you can split up the stereo pair and make two mono pairs. So stereo means a left and a right channel and mono means basically the same thing being recorded on both the left and the right. And having the ability to split your stereo pair into two mono tracks allows you to control each one of those independently. So if you're recording two people with two different transmitters, you can go in your editing software and do things like mute one transmitter when that person's not talking, or you could go through and change the audio levels independently of each other, and you're basically giving yourself more options to be able to do audio editing in post. So if you're gonna be using this as a solo creator or an individual, and you're only using one transmitter to the one receiver, then you're gonna to wanna to use the merge mode. And on the bottom of your receiver, the two buttons when clicked simultaneously and held for three seconds will change the signal from the split signal to the merge signal. And how you'll know that you're in the merged versus split is how the top bar is displayed. When you're in split mode, you'll see a one and a two, and you'll see two different bars bouncing left to right, basically giving your audio levels. When you put it into merged mode, it basically means that instead of being a stereo track, you're doing a dual mono track, which means that both the left and the right are recorded the same on both tracks. So if you're just using one transmitter and the receiver, you don't want it to only be coming out of one ear. So you wanna make sure that you put it into the merged mode so that you're recording on both tracks and you get good audio from your left and your right. If you have it in the split recording mode and you're using one transmitter, and then you use that recording in your editing software, you're gonna to have to switch it from a stereo to a dual mono in editing. And if you forget to do that, well, when you output your video, you're only gonna hear audio out of one side. So if you're on speakers, you'll only hear it out of the left channel. Or if you're listening to headphones, you'll only hear it out of the left ear. So you either have to make sure that it's merged on the receiver, or you're gonna be merging it in your editing software. Now with split recording, you're recording each channel independently, and that's basically all you can do. But with the merged recording, you can split that into two channels and bring one channel 20 decibels lower than the other channel, basically a lower volume. This is called a safety channel. So if you're in a situation where the audio is gonna be fluctuating a lot, there's really highs and really lows, and you don't know if it's gonna be super quiet or super crazy loud, you might wanna turn on the safety channel. And basically in the merged mode, you're recording two channels independently, but it's the same exact recording, just one is quieter than the other. Now, when you're using the Rode Wireless Go 2, you don't have to use the split recording when you're using two transmitters. You can also use the merged recording, but just keep in mind, you're not gonna be able to independently control each transmitter if you're in the merged recording, because what's happening is that both transmitters are being recorded the same on both channels on your audio. So if there is any situation where you wanna change one transmitter from the other, you can't do that in the merged mode. But when you're in this merged mode, you, you have access to that safety channel. So if you're in an environment where you wanna use two transmitters and the audio is all over the place and you wanna have that safety channel, you're gonna to have to put it into the merged mode and then use that safety channel. So if you're a solo creator and you're only using one transmitter and the receiver, I suggest just putting it into the merge mode and just don't use that safety channel unless you absolutely need it. Now, if you're someone who's using both the transmitter and the receiver and you have two people talking on camera, I suggest using the split mode and then in your editing software, you're gonna have to split your stereo track into two dual mono tracks 
and then that allows you to edit them independently and you don't have to worry about the audio being mixed and you can do all of your editing in post. It takes a little bit longer to do that, but you do have more flexibility. Now let's talk about muting the transmitter. So when you're out filming, you can mute the transmitter so that it's not sending signal to the receiver, but everything is still turned on. Now you might wanna use this feature if you're in between shots and you don't need to actually record anything from the transmitter. Say someone's going to the bathroom or you, know, you just don't wanna have that audio being recorded, especially when you have the backup recording turned on. So to mute the transmitter, there's two ways to do it. You could either do it on the transmitter itself or you can do it on the receiver. So on the receiver, you'll use your channel selection. You'll go to which transmitter that you wanna mute and then you're gonna click the left button on the bottom, which is the mute button, and you'll see a little microphone with a slash through it pop up. You'll also see the bar that's underneath won't be showing up audio anymore. There's no audio coming to the transmitter because it's muted. And if you're in split mode, you'll be able to see that there is no audio coming through that channel anymore. Now to turn it back on, you just do the same thing in reverse. Use the channel selection tool, click the mute button on the left side, and you'll see the audio channels pop up in both the spots that they were before. Now to mute yourself on the transmitter, it's actually fairly easy. You just single press on the power button, and now it's muted. Now there's no indication on the actual transmitter that you've been muted. You have to look at the receiver, and you'll see that the little microphone with the slash pops up, and you won't be receiving audio anymore. So just something to keep in mind, it is fairly easy to press this button and mute yourself. So make sure that you don't press this and before you start recording, make sure that you have audio coming to the receiver because the last thing that you wanna do is accidentally mute yourself with the transmitter, do an entire recording and then come to find out later that you muted the entire thing and you have no audio. So let's talk about gain control. On the receiver, you can output how loud the audio is going to your camera and you have gain settings, which basically I explained earlier, in the basic mode you have three settings, zero, negative 12, negative 24. And this is how loud you're sending the signal to your camera. Because you could be getting clean audio on the wireless go transmitter, but it could be super loud in your camera and you're getting like really awful sound. So you're gonna use a combination of your camera settings and your wireless go to settings to be able to get the best sound out of this system. So there's two ways that you can use gain control. The basic one comes out of box set up already and that's the three steps we talked about. Now there's also a 10 step. So if you're someone who wants to dial in your settings a little bit more, you can use up to 10 steps on the wireless go receiver. You have to go in your road central and I'll show you where that is, but you can turn on the advanced mode, which is 10 steps of gain and it goes from zero to negative 30 and basically giving you a lot more options when it comes to your control. Now keep in mind, this gain control is only going to affect you if you're using the 3.5 TRS connection. So how you want to use this with your camera is basically you want your camera recording as low as possible in camera and you wanna boost your signal using the Rode Wireless Go 2. So on a camera, there's what's called a noise floor. And if you boost your audio signal in your camera, you're gonna hear more noise in the background. You'll hear like static in the background. So if you have your camera recording as high as it possibly can, outputting at the lowest it possibly can, it's not gonna sound very good. Ideally, what you wanna do is turn your camera down to its lowest setting and then boost your gain on the Rode Wireless Go 2. And also you'll want to use the manual settings in your camera. So on your camera, you could do auto audio or you could do manual audio. The issue is when it's in auto, it's gonna be fluctuating up and down. So you wanna put it into manual audio. You wanna bring it down as low as possible without turning it off. And then you wanna boost your gain as high as possible to where you're getting a clean signal on the camera itself. Now, what is a clean signal? What I talked about earlier is that audio goes from zero, which is like peaking at the very top, and then it goes down. And you wanna record between negative 12 and zero. So ideally you want your audio to hitting around that negative six mark. A lot of cameras will have a yellow indicator when it's in that range where it's starting to get up towards peaking but it's not fully peaking. And then red is where it's fully peaking and you're losing audio. So you'll just wanna do a test. You'll wanna turn on your Rode Wireless Go. You'll wanna have your subject or you 
talking at the level that you're going to be talking at and then adjust your audio to get your signal to where it needs to be. So step by step, this is what you'll do. Turn on your camera, plug everything in, turn your camera down to the lowest setting possible for audio without turning it off. Then put your gain at zero on the Rode Wireless Go. Now do a sample, start talking and see how it's affecting the audio levels on your camera. If the audio levels are just hitting that red, well, we can bring down the gain in the Rode Wireless Go 2 to a point where the audio is not fully hitting in that red anymore and it's somewhere in the green and yellow. You wanna be recording around that negative six mark and a little bit lower if there is a lot of fluctuation in the way that you're talking. Now, if your audio recording's too low, it's at the very bottom of what we're talking about here and you're like getting very little audio, well, once you bring that into your editing software and you boost that to where it needs to be, you're gonna hear a ton of noise and it's also just, it's not gonna sound good. So the solution for that is you're gonna have to put your Rode Wireless Go 2 at zero and then boost your camera gain until you get to a point where you're getting that audio in that negative six to negative 12 range. And again, when you're doing this, you wanna be talking at the levels that you're actually going to be talking at. So if you're someone who's gonna be yelling or getting really excited in your conversations, well, you wanna make sure that you're checking those levels when you're doing the setup. Because if you're just talking normal and you know this is what you're doing your test at, but then you start going really loud and you're doing this and ah, da, da, well, you're not gonna get a clean recording. And I work with a lot of fitness professionals and this is one thing that I have to worry about all the time is that their voice gets much louder when they get excited. So I have to make sure that I'm recording at the proper levels for when that excitement happens. And I might use the safety channel in that situation if there's a lot of fluctuation. And this is where you're gonna to have to decide if you need that safety channel and you're gonna to have to weigh the benefits of using the split versus merged recording. But for a solo creator, it's gonna be a lot easier because you don't have to worry about that split recording. One last note about setup is that if you're using something like a lavalier mic or a headset mic, you wanna make sure that you plug it into the transmitter and that you're doing this audio adjustments with the microphone that you're gonna be using because plugging these microphones into the transmitter is gonna change the signal a little bit and also where you position it is gonna change the signal. So if you have a microphone over the ear, right on your mouth, it's gonna sound much louder than if you have a lavalier mic down towards your chest. So you wanna make sure that everything is set up how you're gonna use it and then do your audio setup after that point. All right, so let's talk about the low sensitivity mode. So if you're in a situation where the microphone that you've plugged into the transmitter is recording too hot, or if you're using something like the interview handheld adapter, you might wanna access the low sensitivity mode. And that basically makes the microphone less sensitive so your recording is not so loud. Now there's two ways to access this mode. One is on the receiver and the other is in Rode Central and I'll show you when we get to that section. But to access it on the receiver, you're gonna use your channel selection icon, click on the channel, and then press and hold the mute button. And you're gonna to wanna to hold it for three seconds until you see this little blue upside down triangle turn on. And to turn off low sensitivity mode, you just do the same thing in reverse. Now, if your mic is muted and you see that little mute icon, you could still turn on your low sensitivity mode, but you're not gonna see the little blue triangle. As soon as you turn off the mute button, you'll see that the triangle does pop up. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. The Low sensitivity mode is the same position as the mute mode. So if you put it into low sensitivity mode, make sure that you turn off the mute so you can see that it's there. So now we've gone over everything when it comes to the receivers and the transmitters and how you use these with all the physical buttons on the devices themselves. Now let's dig into the Rode Central and I'm gonna show you how you use Rode Central to change some of these settings, update your devices, and also how you access some of these features that aren't available from the buttons that are on the actual Rode Wireless Go themselves. To download the Rode Central, you're gonna to go to Rode's website and download it onto your computer, whether you have a Mac or a PC. And when you open it for the first time, this is the screen that you're gonna get. It just says, please connect the Rode device to get started. So you're gonna need a connector cable. I have a MacBook Pro that uses USB-C, so I have a USB-C to USB-C to plug into my computer. Now, you don't have to turn on the transmitter or the receiver 
to plug it in. You just need to plug it straight in and it will automatically turn on from the bus power on your computer. So let's start with the receiver. So I'm gonna plug this into my USB-C and automatically it will connect to your Rode Wireless Go receiver. And you'll see right here, everything pops up for the receiver. Now I'm gonna grab another cable and I'm also gonna plug in the transmitter at the same time. And now what you'll see is that in the upper left-hand corner of Rode Central, it's showing both the transmitter and the receiver. Transmitter is TX and receiver is RX. So if you want to, you could plug all three of these in at once and they all pop up here in that upper left-hand corner. You don't have to do it one at a time. So let's open up the receiver first. So with multiple plugged in, I'll just click on the receiver, the one that says RX. And you'll see that at the bottom, there's now an indication that says one other device is connected. So in the upper left-hand corner, you're just gonna see which device I'm looking at, the firmware version and the battery level with a little battery icon. Now let's go into the settings. So first setting is your backlit display. This is that power saver mode that we talked about earlier. You can turn it on and off here. You have your gain mode. So earlier I was saying with the gain mode, you have the three steps or you have the 10 steps. Well, this is where you change it between the three and the 10. So right now, course, that is the three-step mode. I'll change it to fine, and that's where you could go through the 10 steps. Now in the next box, you'll see the gain, and I could change it. So negative 30, negative 27, negative 24, 21, 18, 15, 12, nine, six, three, and zero. Now you can also change these settings on the receiver themselves. And instead of being that little wedge icon, you'll actually see the decibels pop up when you have it in fine mode. So as you can see right here, I'm clicking through and I'm changing it using the gain control button on the receiver and it's going through the different numbers. Now the next button over is your split and your merged mode. And you'll see that when it's in split mode, there's no safety channel option. However, when you click over to merged mode, your safety channel now is available and you can turn that on or off. So if you wanna turn on your safety channel, you have to plug in your Rode Wireless Go receiver, make sure it's in merged mode, so either turn it on using Rode Central or both buttons on the receiver, and then you can turn on that safety channel. And when that safety channel is turned on, you'll see the blue indicator on the receiver itself. Now the last thing that you can change on the receiver is the functionality of your power button. So as we've been talking about in this video, when you click this, it's your backlit display. It's the power saver mode. However, the last button in Rode Central allows you to change this to marker. And so if you don't need to access that backlit setting when you're recording, you could use this as a marker. And markers come into play when you're doing a backup recording. So this is where you switch it from a backlit button to a marker button. And while you're recording, if you click this power button once, it's gonna set a marker on that backup recording. And this is important if you wanna find a specific point in say an interview, and you just wanna make sure that you know where that's at, you click the marker button. Or if there's audio dropouts, you'll see the markers come into play. Now underneath that's gonna show your battery level. When it's plugged into your computer, it is also charging the battery. It's gonna show your clock. So it's gonna show what time it is and what date it is. And if you're traveling, you'll wanna reset this so that it's accurate for the place that you're at. It's gonna set it to your computer's clock. So if your computer switches, you wanna make sure to switch your roads so that they're not on a different time zone if you're recording halfway across the world. Underneath that is your firmware version. And if your firmware needs an upgrade, there'll be a button to update it. You'll just update it from Road Central. It just takes a couple minutes and then it will be completely updated. And then underneath that, it's gonna have a hardware ID. So that's it for the receiver. Now let's go into the transmitter. And the transmitter is a little bit different. So you have both your backup recordings if you've done backup recordings and your settings. So in the upper left-hand corner, you'll hit the gear icon and that's gonna pull up all of your settings. Whereas if you need to access your backup recording, you'll click on one of those underneath the transmitter icon and it's gonna pull up your backup recording. So let's go into the settings first. Now these settings are a little bit different than what you find on the receiver. First is your backup recording and you have three options. You have always, you have backup, and you have off. These are gonna come in the off setting. So the two settings for your backup recording is either whenever you turn on the transmitter, it starts recording a backup, or 
whenever it connects to the receiver, it starts recording. So always means that whenever you turn on your transmitter, it's getting a backup recording. And backup means that when you connect your receiver to your transmitter and both are turned on, then it's gonna start the backup recording. All right, so next is the pad feature that we talked about earlier. So you can turn this on or off in the Rode Central as well. Now next is your LEDs. So if your LEDs are too bright, you can dim these. They don't have to be at full brightness. You have the option to either make them dim or bright. And last is the settings for your power button. So on the transmitter, you can change this from the mute button. So instead of being the mute button, if you're worried about hitting it, then you could change this to none where it doesn't do anything or you could change this to marker. So if you need to use this to mark different things that come up in your recording, you could do it on the transmitter and not necessarily the receiver. So if you're someone who's a solo creator and you wanna make sure to mark your recording for different things as you're going along, you could turn on your marker button and then wherever your transmitter is, just click it once and you set a marker for yourself. So you have three options with that power button. And if you don't wanna use the mute or the marker, just put it on none so there's no chance of you accidentally muting something. Now underneath that, you'll see your recording mode. And this is in regards to your backup recording. So when you're in always mode, the only recording that you have access to is broadcast quality or uncompressed. And you'll get seven hours worth of backup recording on your transmitter. Now, if you're in backup mode, you can switch this between standard and broadcast. Standard is compressed, which allows you to get about 40 hours worth of audio, and then the broadcast quality is uncompressed, which is about seven hours. Now, underneath the recording mode, you'll see how much data has been recorded on your transmitter. Right now, it's showing that I have about four hours remaining in uncompressed. If I switch this to standard, you'll see that 28 hours remain. And if I wanna format the internal hard drive, I just click the button on the right-hand side, the little trash can, and it will completely clear out all my audio. Now underneath that, you'll see your clock. And again, you wanna change this depending on where you're at in the world. And you'll see your firmware, and there'll be a button to update this if you need to update your transmitter. Now, when you have backup recordings on your transmitter, you could just click on each recording and you can listen to them. So you'll just click on the recording that you wanna to listen to and you could start playing it and you could skip around to the different markers. So for example, this one has a lot of markers and you could skip through them using this button next to the play button. Now it's displaying the time in the recording and then time of day underneath that. And if you have markers, they're going to pop up. And one thing that's great about the Rode Wireless Go 2, when you have the backup recording turned on, if there is a dropout, say the receiver signal drops down to zero and you're not getting that transmission, it automatically sets a marker. So you could see in this recording, I had a lot of dropouts. There must've been some connectivity issue between the transmitter and the receiver. And that's indicating to me that I need to make sure that I download this backup recording and I use the backup recording. And I can see the specific times at where I had this issue. Now there's no way to pull all the backup recordings off the transmitter at once. You have to go file by file and then click the export button in the upper right hand corner. So I'm on record 00010 and I click the export button and a little dialog box is gonna come up. I can rename the file. I could change my settings to what I need for the export, and then I could click export. And when you're using a backup recording, you have to do each one of these independently. There's no way to do them all at once. And that's it for the Rode Central. That's all the functionality that you have access to, and it is something that you're gonna to have to use once in a while, especially when you're doing backup recordings. So the last section of this video, let's talk about workflow and using backup recordings. So my workflow when working with the Rode Wireless Go 2 is that I always keep my backup recording on. And that's just because if there's any issues, I always know I can go to my backup recording and salvage it. So I use the backup mode. And the backup mode is the one that allows you to use the standard quality or broadcast quality. I typically keep it in broadcast quality just so I know I'm always getting the best audio. Now how the backup function works is basically as soon as you turn on the transmitter and the receiver, it's gonna start the backup recording and you'll see the REC on the screen. So to make sure that I'm not just rolling the backup at all times, in between takes, I'll just turn off my receiver. 
and that basically stops the backup recording. And if I'm filming someone else and they have the transmitter on, I don't need to ask them to keep turning it on and off. I know I have seven hours worth of recording time, so if I'm shooting and I know these aren't gonna be on for more than seven hours, then I don't really have to worry about the transmitter going on and off at all times. If I'm behind camera, I'll just make sure that I turn the receiver on and off and that cuts the backup recording. Now, if I'm filming myself, I would put it in the always mode. And that basically means as soon as I turn on the transmitter, it starts recording a backup recording. And this is better because if the camera is away from me, say I'm doing a talking scene and I put the camera over there somewhere, well, I could just flip on my transmitter, look at it, make sure it's turned on. I know it's doing a backup recording and I know that I'm always safe with my audio. Now, if I'm shooting solo and I'm just using one transmitter, I'll put it into the merged mode. And if I'm shooting with two transmitters, I'll put it into the split mode. And if I'm using two transmitters, I like to keep it into the backup mode so that when I turn off my receiver, both transmitters stop backup recordings at the same time. Now, when I'm done with my shoot, I'll pull up Road Central. And if it's a client job, then I'll just pull all the backup recordings and I just go one by one. I click on the backup recording, I hit export, and I put it into the folder that it needs to go. And unfortunately, you have to do that with every recording. That's one thing that's kind of frustrating about using this software and using these backup recordings. There's no way to actually go through and download them all at once. And another frustrating point is there no way to activate the backup recording while both the transmitter and receiver are turned on. You have to use one of those two modes where either you turn off the transmitter or you turn off the receiver. And it would be nice if there was a function where when both are turned on, I can start a backup recording at a certain point and then stop it at a certain point. However, that function doesn't exist, so you have to turn them on and off to be able to turn on and off that backup recording. Now, one other thing that you just wanna do with your workflow is make sure that you erase your transmitter before you go out and shoot again, because there's no way to erase the transmitter when you're out working on a project. You have to do it on Road Central. So just make sure that before you go out and shoot that your devices are fully charged and plug them in and check on Road Central to make sure that your backup recording is set up properly. And then also to make sure that there's no backup recordings on the transmitter themselves. And once you're set up once, all the settings save on the Rode Wireless Go 2. So if you're someone who's doing the same settings over and over, you're really not gonna have to set these up that often. But if you're someone who's changing different situations, you'll just wanna make sure to go into your Rode Central and make sure all your settings are set up properly before you go out and shoot. So next, I highly suggest you check out this video here. It goes through how to capture better audio and get the best recording from any situation. I'll see you over there.